Hi everybody, Chris Lodi here, uh, back with another 8-bit warp tutorial. This is something that I've been promising for quite a while, so apologies that I haven't managed to get this done sooner, but it's, a, it's quite a complicated one, so I had to kind of backtrack and reverse engineer my own work to try and work out how I've done this. So this tutorial is about how you can create your own drum sounds on 8-bit warps using its synthesis engines, and more specifically, how you can create more than one drum sound within a pattern, so that you can use one pattern to create your intro drum loop. So these will be monophonic drum sounds, so one drum sound per step, which is very authentic as to how the drum programming was done on early 8-bit uh, video games and that kind of thing. So I've already done a little bit of groundwork in that I've done a couple of other tutorials for the 8-bit warps, one on the sweep function and one on the synth engines, and then separately I've done a kick and clap tutorial which are using a different method to the one we're going to use today. So I'll put a link below and you can check those out because I'll just speed things up here. So I'm going to try and make this tutorial as accessible as possible. So I'll be referring to knobs by number across the top and this, the bottom row below. I'll be referring to the rubber buttons as just buttons and then the steps as step by number. So we uh, all know where we are. So the first thing we need to do is either create or find an empty pattern. I've got a pattern loaded up here, so I'm just going to hold cancel and then press pattern and then press memory. Cancel is button eight and pattern is button seven and memory is button six. So cancel pattern, cancel memory. And that's going to erase the sound that we've got saved and also the, the contents of the sequencer. So to create drum sounds, we need something noisy and non-pitch sounding. The 8-bit walks doesn't actually have any kind of noise waveform, but luckily we've got the FM engine, which is nice and dirty sounding. So that's what we're going to use to create our drum sounds. We're going to use the sweep to create downward pitch envelope, which is going to give us a thump of our drums. Uh, what I'm going to do is create a kick drum, and then as we go through, I can vary that to a snare and a hi hat sound. So we'll create a we'll create a kick drum, and we'll save that into the memory, and then we'll vary those to create the other two drum sounds. So this is what you should hear if you play the keyboard with an initialized patch. Just a basic beep. I'm going to drop an octave, which is button number three, down to here. So the first D on the keyboard, it's going to sound like that. That's the pitch that we want to program in our kick drum sounds. So the next thing I'm going to do is hold function, which is button two, and press step number four, which switches us to the FM engine, which just gets us that sound. And then there's a few other things I need to do just to tweak uh, to make this right. So hold function again, button two. I'm going to turn off the filter by pressing step number eight. It's not going to make a huge difference to the sound straight away, but it will a bit later on. I'm going to turn down the attack, uh, which is knob number seven, to zero. It gives an instant start, and I'm just going to add a little bit of release on. We're going to go to 10. So that's uh, knob number 8. I'm just going to turn it up by about 10%. Just gives it just a little bit of release. I'm going to leave the decay and sustain as they are. Now I'm going to turn up the gate uh, time, which is knob number 9, all the way to the top to 90. Uh, when we come to program it later, it's going to make a difference to the way it sounds. So the next thing I'm going to do is to turn up knob 1 on the top row to about 0.7, this is at about 10% of the full range, and it'll sound like this. It'll end there. So these settings don't have to be precise, they're kind of general settings. I'm going to give you my exact settings, and then you can find your own little mini tweaks within that to create your own unique sounds. And then I'm going to turn up knob 2, all the way to the top. So, there. so I'm going to turn knob Three. Again, down to about 10% of the full range, which will be 20. So we've got that sound currently. Then I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to turn up knob one on the top row all the way to the top. I'm going to do the same with knob two. And then I'm going to do the same with knob three. So all they're all the way up to the top. So we should end with this sound. Still not very kick drum sounding. So what we need to do is turn on the pitch sweep. So we hold button two and press button three. That's going to turn on a downward pitch sweep. And there's our kick drum sound. So now what we can do is we can program our little sequence using that kick drum just by holding the step and pressing that uh, D key. So it's a good idea now to save that uh, sound into the memory and the pattern into the memory. So I'm going to press button 2, which is function, and then press button 6, which is memory. That'll then prompt us to pick a slot to save our sound into. So I'm going to pick the same one that we cleared. 
and then the same with function and pattern which is button 7 and then again I'm going to select the same one that we cleared before so that will then save that into the memory. So now that we've created our kick drum sound and our kick drum pattern it's fairly easy to get from there to our other drum sounds using automation or parameter locking. Now just notice that after clearing a pattern the parameter lock button is lit up green which means it's switched on but I'm not sure that, that was the case on earlier firmware versions so I found a way that we can double check it uh, for accessibility purposes. So parameter locking is on button number 10 and it will be lit up green when it's on. When we programmed in our kick drum sound we used D3 which is down here. To program in our snares we're going to use D4 which is the next D on the keyboard up here. But what I'm going to do is hold a step and program that in and then if we play that will sound like that. So what we need to do is to hold the step where we programmed in our snare and turn up a knob number one on the top row which is our ratio. This is going to make the FM sound more harsh which is going to give it much more of a, of a snare drum cut sound. So I'm going to turn it up to about eight which is sort of past the halfway mark. Then as we play it'll sound like this. Much noisier. So that's with parameter locks switched on. If parameter locks are switched off, it'll sound like it did when we programmed in. So you can cycle between on and off by pressing button number 10. So to get to a hi-hat sound, we need a few more tweaks. I'm gonna switch the keyboard up a few octaves. So I'm gonna press octave up, which is button four, three times. So it'll turn orange. And if we press the first D on the keyboard, we're gonna hear that. We also need to create an upward pitch sweep. So we hold button two and we press button four once, which will switch us to an upward pitch sweep. So this is what we hear when we press the first D on the keyboard. So I'm gonna program these, these into a few steps uh, back here maybe like that. So then we press play, we'll hear this. Again, not very uh, hi-hat sounding just yet, but if we hold the steps where we programmed in our hi-hats and we turn up the first knob all the way to the top, so 32. That creates a really high ratio for our FM synthesis. So we get this. So we're nearly there. All we need to do is hold the steps where we want our hi-hat sounds to be and turn the gate time down, which is knob number nine. We're gonna go all the way to the bottom. This is gonna create nice little staccato sounds for our hi-hats. So there we go, that's all there is to it. It's uh, fairly simple, we just use parameter locks to automate that first sound into several different ones. So there's loads of variety, you can go through and find different settings for these different drum sounds and create all sorts of different stuff. So I really hope you found this video helpful and uh, yeah, please leave us a like and a comment and please subscribe to the channel. So I'll see you again in the future. Cheers.